Don't touch anything. No. Okay. As you're set. set. You're set. <laughs> oh, I'm set. It says this meeting is being live streamed. Yes. Um, and don't touch God, got it or nothing. Don't you can touch, touch you can touch got it. We okay. are live. We are live. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Weekly Word with Women of Grace. As you heard, we're getting set up and making sure we have everything uh, streaming properly this evening. Thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Felicia Johnson for any new people that are joining us this evening. And I am the founder of Women of Grace and want to thank you for being with us this evening for Weekly Word with Women of Grace. We're gonna go ahead and get started as always, I'm going to start off with a brief introduction, just in case we have some new family members with us this evening. So Women of Grace is an outreach ministry, and we are dedicated to being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. That is our sole purpose. We want to be a vehicle that he uses to bring people into relationship with him. That is our mission statement. You guys know we're always doing things in um, the community to make sure that we are touching lives for him. And so I want to invite you to follow us. There are several ways in which you can become a part of the community. That's what we call it. You can follow us on Facebook which is Women of Grace Outreach Ministry. You can go to our website, which is, I still say www, and I know we don't need that, but there's something about that for me. So www.womenofgracestl.com. Don't forget the STL because there is another organization called Women of Grace. So make sure you put that STL behind the Women of Grace, and that'll allow you to connect directly with us. You can also connect with us on Instagram. And I like to say, follow us as we follow Christ. And that is Women of Grace STL. And if you have any prayer requests or you'd like some more information about the ministry, you can email us at womenofgracestl at yahoo.com. And so, you guys, we are super excited um, just to be back live with you. I feel like it's been so very long. I have missed you guys. Um, I want to also take this time to acknowledge our new members. We have four new members. As you guys know, we had our final uh, new members meeting of 2023. We had that last Saturday. We do those quarterly, you guys. Um, so if you're interested in joining the ministry, I'm going to say hold tight, uh, join us for some activities, continue to follow us, and we'll have a new members meeting in 2024. But I want to welcome Brandy, Mary, Deneen, and Kim. Welcome to the Women of Grace Outreach Ministry and Sisterhood. We're excited to have you guys serving with us. We're excited that you decided to take this journey and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ with us. And we have an upcoming event. I know we have been flooding your timelines and we've been talking about this for a while, but our breast cancer awareness event is on October the 7th. This year, this is an annual event for Women of Grace. I believe it's our fifth year now. But this year, we have the opportunity, we've been blessed with the opportunity to have Missouri Baptist Mammography Van with us. They will be conducting mammograms from 9 a.m. until noon. And so we're asking all of you to come and have your mammograms with us. And you can do that by pre-registering. You do need to pre-register. And you can do that by calling 314 996 Five one seven zero, and you're going to call that number to pre-register to have your mammogram with Women of Grace Outreach Ministry on October the 7th. Make sure you mention Women of Grace. We're going to be at the St. Louis County Library, the Rock Road location. And I'm sure some of you are saying, well, I don't have insurance. 
that's not a problem. There's a different phone number for you to call and see if you qualify for a free mammogram. Again, that number's different. So to pre-register with insurance is 314-996-5170. And if you don't have insurance and you wanna qualify, see if you qualify for a free mammogram, that's 314-956-9829. And the deadline to pre-register is September the 25th. Now that's part one. So we're gonna have a two-fold uh, celebration, um, awareness, breast cancer event on October 7th. So that's part one. Come and get your mammograms with us. Hang out with your Women of Grace sisters until noon. And then our annual breast cancer awareness event starts at noon and it's from 12 until 2 p.m. So we're gonna have lunch. We're gonna have breast cancer awareness information. Um, we're just gonna have an atmosphere that supports people who are battling, um, an encouraging atmosphere for those who may be caretakers or affected by breast cancer or any other cancer for that matter. We're going to have raffles, we're going to have giveaways, and we're going to hear some encouraging testimonies from some survivors. So I am personally inviting you to have your mammogram with your WOG sisters, then stay for lunch and fellowship. Why am I giving you a personal invitation? Because I have more than a couple of sister friends that were diagnosed early. Uh, with breast cancer, and they're still here today to talk about it because it was diagnosed early. So tonight, along with the next four um, weekly word segments, we are going to have survivors with us that are going to share a little bit of their, their journey and their testimonies, you guys, because we do know um, that early detection saves lives. So I'm super excited about our guest this evening. So I want to go ahead and open up in prayer. And we're just going to go ahead and get started with Weekly Word with Women of Grace. Oh, I forgot something. Our seven-day initiative. See, I got so excited. I, I just fast-forwarded through that. Um, if you've been with us for a while, you know that Women of Grace does something every day of the week to bring people into a relationship with Christ. So on Monday, there's a Facebook post, say that fast that tongue died. Sorry. there's a facebook post called motivational monday and that's posted every monday morning and it's just a little bit of encouragement to help you get that work week started off right tuesday is testimony tuesday again that's another post on our facebook page where our women of grace members share a little bit about their testimonies. Um, a lot of times we're very transparent because we want to encourage you. We know that we all go through tests, trials, and tribulations. And we want to make sure that you know that God is always with you, that his word says he'll never leave or forsake you, and that your test will become your testimony. So that's Testimony Tuesday. Then Refuel Wednesday is our intercessory prayer call that we do every Wednesday morning at 5.55 a.m. And yes, it is intentional, 5.55, because five is the number that represents grace. So we say we come together in God's grace upon grace upon grace. And it's a conference line number. You simply dial it. You put in the access code. Put your phone on mute. And don't worry, if you forget, we'll, we'll mute you. And then just go to that place where you meet God and touch and agree with the prayer that's going forth. So that's every Wednesday morning. And we say, make your petitions known to God as you are in that prayer posture, because the word says we're two or more gathered. He's in the midst. So we're gathering and we know that he's in the midst and we're touching and agreeing with you and standing in agreement with whatever you're believing God for. So that's Wednesday. And then Thursday is where we are this evening, Weekly Word with Women of Grace. We come together every Thursday evening at 6.30 p.m. right here via Facebook Live. 
we have mighty men and women of God that come on and they they share the word with you. They share an encouraging word. They um, share scriptures and parts of their, their testimonies and their journeys. And, and that's all to give you a little spiritual food to satisfy your spiritual appetite. So that's every Thursday evening at 6.30 p.m. Friday is another post. It's called Happy Hour Friday. And we say that that post is better than any happy hour that you will physically attend. And it will leave you more joyful and more happy. So that's a post. And then Saturday is Sister Circle Saturday. And that's where some of your Women of Grace sisters get together. We sit around the table or virtually right now and we have conversation. So thank you all for sending in the topics because you keep our topic tank filled. But that's Sister Circle Saturday, every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. right on Facebook. And then Sunday, Sunday is what we call Soulful Sunday. And we say that's the day that you seal the deal. That's the day where we post the prayer of repentance and the prayer of salvation and extend that invitation for you to come in an intimate and an intentional relationship with Christ. So that's our seven day initiative. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. And if you need any type of uh, prayer or you have a prayer request, go ahead and send that to us through our website or you can email us directly. So now that I'm back in proper alignment and I've done things decent and in order, <laughs> We will pray and we'll get started with tonight's segment. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to assemble here together in fellowship and to hear your word, to hear uh, testimonies from your people, Lord, where you get all the glory. And Lord, we just thank you for what you've done already in getting us here together. We thank you for our guest this evening. We thank you for her yes. We thank you for her willingness to uh, share what you've done in her life. And Lord, we know that you're no respecter of persons. So if you did it for her, you'll do it for others. So Lord, I thank you that tonight is a testament of your faithfulness, of your goodness, Lord, of um, just you being better to us than we can ever be to ourselves. So, Lord, we say have your way this evening. We ask that you touch those that need a touch from you. We ask that this be an atmosphere where um, miracles happen. Miracles happen. You are promise keeper and light in the darkness. So, Lord, we stand trusting and believing you this evening. And we just thank you for what you're going to do this evening. And we give you honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, you guys, I'm excited about our guest this evening. Um, she is a sweet, kind, spirited, and just warm-hearted woman. She's a retired educator. And after retirement, she took care of several of her ill family members. Not only is this woman of God compassionate about helping others and serving others, she is a mighty prayer warrior and an intercessor. And I have the pleasure of serving with this beautiful woman of God at Faith Church. It is beyond a blessing, if that's even possible, but that's how excited I am to be here with her this evening, to share this platform with such a testament of God's grace, of God's faithfulness. So it is my honor and my privilege to introduce to some and to present to others my friend, my sister in Christ, and just a true woman of God, Miss Sylvia Brown. Welcome to Weekly Word with Women of Grace, Miss Sylvia. Thank you, Felicia, for inviting me to tell my testimony. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, and we thank you for being table. here with us this <laughs> evening. You guys, Miss <laughs> Sylvia is a breast cancer survivor. And uh, she five is years. five, how many? Five years. Five years. And she yeah. accepted, willingly accepted my invitation to come here this evening to share 
a little bit about her journey. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Miss Sylvia, and she is going to share whatever the Lord has put on her heart to share with us this evening. Miss Sylvia? Okay, let's start with um, how often when you're young in college, you have the excitement of going for your degree, and guess what? I go to the clinic, find out that I had a lump in my left breast. This was in 1972. And I go and find out I needed a miracle. Fortunately, my loved ones uh, were alive and they were interceding and praying that it was not cancer, and I did receive a miracle back then. Praise God. Then, um, after taking care of my mom, my dad, my aunt, and my grandmother, all of them, I decided to retire from education in 2013, which made me a 40-year uh, retiree in education. Wow. But um, little did I know that working, uh, just doing everything that needed to be done for them, which was a really pleasant joy of letting me be their caregiver and taking them through their transition and moving on to glory. I learned a lot about death, about health about how to go about getting help for your loved ones. Don't do it alone, okay? Mm -hmm. And so networking with people made it very easy and staying in faith with God and praying up all the time. Um, it was a journey that made me realize how important it is to make connections. While I was in church, the Lord had put on my heart because I was taking care of so many loved ones and they were all going at different times and I had to take care of their finances. I had to make funeral plans. I had to do a lot. And um, Psalms 23 was what was put on my heart to stay fast and faithful in believing God for needs. Um, don't worry about finances, don't worry about anything. Just be in faith, don't fear. And fortunately, as the women in my life passed on, they blessed me with seeing them go through their transition with the glory of the Lord, knowing that they were going on to a better place. So in 2016, as I was preparing to um, make arrangements for my mom uh, for her funeral and everything, that was the one year that I missed getting my mammogram. Mm -hmm. I was faithful all the way up to the time of college to get it done every year, but I missed that year in 2016. And sometimes you could get so busy in doing and for others and doing what you need to do. And in 2017, when I went to get the mammogram, that's when I was told that I had cancer. Well, fortunately, I went to a church that had health fairs and had health guests talk about how women need to be very intentional about taking care of what needs to be done dealing with breast cancer and how so many women can be in denial. And during this time, just like in college, I didn't feel anything. I just thought, I'm okay. I'm in good health. 
And um, okay, in college, I got the miracle. But this time around, it was a rude awakening that I needed to get further information. So mm -hmm. I went to, I decided to go to not one doctor to confirm it, but I went mm -hmm. to three doctors oh, wow. and to make sure that it was confirmed. Well, in the meantime, I did have uh, pastors to lay hand on me, to pray for me. Um, I had a very close best girlfriend that was diagnosed with lung cancer. And she was going through her journey right along with me. And unfortunately, she passed while I was still going through. I went to her funeral and her pastor had mentioned her name and said, you are loose. And if you know T.D. Jakes, he would say, you're loose and mm -hmm. you've gone on to glory. And she was a very faithful young woman that it really touched my heart. And I, I was just more shocked about her leaving at an early age than my own loved ones because they were up in age. Mm -hmm. So I decided to take that journey at uh, T.D. Jake's last Woman Thou Loose conference. And I went there and that's when I got another revelation that, okay, I learned so much. I was so in awe with all thousands of women at the conference that when I got back home, the first thing I thought, I said, this is not just for me, Lord. I don't mm -hmm. know why this is happening, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be in faith that you're going to take me through this and I'm going to do everything I can to focus on the word. And so as my journey began, I uh, had to take chemo. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course I did pick a doctor that I felt comfortable with because of her personality. The other two doctors that I interview, and don't be afraid to interview doctors. Just don't go out there and decide, I'm okay, and I'm not going to listen to anybody. Um, do your homework. And so um, I inquired with other people that were going through their cancer journey, what doctors they went to. And I went to this one particular doctor. And I decided she was the one that was going to do the surgery. And she told me that I had to have chemo. Now, going through chemo, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I had, one of the nurses said to me that uh, you're getting a very strong chemo. And they call it the red devil. And I looked at her and I said, honey, we're not going to call anything red devil. This is the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I know that's right. So we're not doing that. Right. So um, I'm very strong with using the word of God. So mm -hmm. you also need to pick a person that could be your support person. When you go to the doctor, I am a single woman that didn't have any kids or a husband. So I had to choose someone in my family that I trusted mm -hmm. to go with me to the visits. And um, fortunately, I picked someone that was very close in my family that understood me and I understood her. And so she would go with me. Now, while I was going through chemo, I would suggest that you get earphones 
and you also listen to praise and worship music mm -hmm. while you're in that chair and uh, let the peace of God just, just, just rain on you and mm -hmm. keep you calm. And as I was going through this, um, my cousin said to me, I'm amazed how at peace you are while you were going through this. She says, I've seen people go through chemo and they're very sick. They're very, they're not able to function. Well, my thought was God said he was gonna protect me and I would be able to do what I needed to do because as a single woman that is the head of my household, I have, priorities and bills and things that I need to take care of and I need to be in my right mind so <laughs> my prayer was God if I gotta go through this then I'm gonna go through this with the joy of the Lord as my strength amen and I was very joyful and a matter of fact I like to shop so <laughs> So my cousin, she thought it was very strange when I left chemo. I wanted to go shopping. <laughs> and I decided I was going to redecorate my home. Well, it was something I wanted to do. But let me backtrack. Why it's important to get a connect group. I belonged to a church at that time that I inquired if they had a cancer group that I could join. Mm -hmm. fortunately they did and I joined the connect group at the church and it was very rewarding because you're talking to other people that are going through their journeys and it was men and women in the group and if you had questions you got your answer from those that could give you advice Mm. everyone was going through a different stage or a different type of cancer so um it was very rewarding to do that mm -hmm. and I asked them and that was one of the things they said when I was uh going uh to those classes find things that you enjoy doing don't let your mind get idle and the devil, he wants to attack your memory and your mind, put a lot of negative thoughts there. And another thing they suggest, stay away from negative people. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be around anyone that's negative while you're going through your journey. Um, one of the things that I encountered while I was going through, I heard a lot of uh lack of knowledge coming out of the mouths of some people, such as some people said, well, maybe you got cancer because you never had kids. I said, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, could you explain to me why kids got cancer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then you hear like, well, you must have did something wrong to get cancer. And I'm, or you must have been angry about something. I said, no, not really, you know? Yeah. Mm. And it's like, okay, uh, you're going to have to be strong enough in your mind to know you did nothing wrong. Don't let anyone put shame on you because of your journey. Well, in the process, when I had said, this is not just for me, <laughs> I have a cousin around the same age as me that she lived in another state and I called her to tell her what was going on with me and come to find out she was going through the same thing so we were encouraging each other that we could make it through this and um so those are some of the tidbits that I can give you about that mm -hmm. and also I had previously acknowledge women of faith like Joyce Meyer, Jody Osteen, Betty Price, mm -hmm. and Nicole Crank. These are all women that were attacked by cancer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they fought 
and won the battle. Amen. So uh, when you hear uh, testimonies of women of faith and their journey, and I kept uh, a lot of scripture, healing scriptures in front of me. Uh, I went on the internet and heard healing scriptures. There's one particular a uh, young lady named Cindy Trim mm-hmm. who has a healing uh, uh, scripture that's called Declare Your Healing. Mm-hmm. And she covers the top of your head to the soles of your feet with all medical concerns, emotional concerns, as well as spiritual concerns. Oh my goodness. I tell anybody and during my whole time I was going through my journey I will refer her to anyone when I went to the hospital anyone that was going through something you could still minister to other people while you're going through and watch God work Amen. because you're not putting your mind all on you or having a pity party mm. um you won't have time for that if you focus on your journey to get healed. Yeah. So uh, in the process of going through this, um, the doctors and the nurses were amazed that I didn't lose any weight. I was still active and doing what I had to do. I still exercised. I still, the only thing that happened to me I had to go into the hospital because they did not tell me why you're taking that chemo. You have to drink a lot of water, a lot mm-hmm. of water to just flood your, flush your system. Mm-hmm. And I was dehydrated. And even mm-hmm. after chemo, you should always drink a lot of water uh, because you need to flush your system constantly and change your diet. And, um, and I was doing those things after that. Um, but I would strongly recommend listening to a lot of healing scriptures and also the word and listening to other testimonies also and get that information. As I mm-hmm. even further, I went outside the church and decided I'm going to go and network and Mm -hmm. find the more information. So I joined the cancer community group in um, West County, and they had a yoga class for cancer Mm -hmm. survivors. And um, I also went to cancer group sessions at the time at St. Mary's and I think Mercy Hospital or New ba- a new was it New Ballast? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, they had um, meetings with cancer uh, survivors and those that were going through. Mm-hmm. I learned so much more from the women than the doctors. Yeah, you know they it's interesting. I just gotta interrupt tips. you for one second because mm-hmm. you said something that was so confirming. So I have a couple of friends that not breast cancer, but people that are battling illness. And Cindy Trim, when my mother was going through her cancer battle, um, wasn't mm-hmm. breast cancer, but she had a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Cindy right. Trim is that's when I discovered Cindy Trim. And when right. you talk about just a woman that prays and covers yes. everything, she yes. is a prayer warrior. So I would yes. say, Miss. Miss Sylvia just confirmed that Cindy Trim has a prayer for everything, everything, yeah. spiritual warfare, and it takes it to a whole different level. So my goodness, yeah. that was just a confirming word. <laughs> yes. And it's really for, cause I, I introduced my whole family to her and even friends because, and that's why I said, you don't know why you have to go through in order to be a blessing for others. Mm -hmm. Because your journey is about actually being a testimony for your family and friends and people you encounter. So uh, 
all my family members were like, okay, I'm really amazed that you did this. So if I get sick, I know how to go through this, you know, and with a positive attitude. And my thought was because I had to bury four of my elderly loved ones and saw how the glow in their face when they passed on and went through their transition, I just said to myself, well, Lord, if I'm not going to be here, then I want to be in your presence knowing that I have eternal life and I have a new body. Mm. I'm not going to be in fear. One way or the other, I win either way. Either way. Either way, you win. And I love what you said earlier about, I think that's a word for somebody where you said, I interviewed the doctors and I made my selection because it is a journey and you want to be able to be, you know, at peace. So I love that's That's a word for somebody. Don't just pick anybody, interview them and make sure that it's somebody who is worthy of taking that journey with you. And as the process went uh, down the road uh, with uh, reconstruction, because I had both of my breasts removed, they asked me if I wanted one. I says, no, let's do both, because some people choose to do one. My thought was, and I asked the doctor, my oncologist, I said, well, um, she, well, she wanted me to consider taking uh, chemo pills. Well, after taking the chemo liquid fluid going through my veins, I had to go before the Lord and ask him what would be the best way to deal with that, you know? And, you know, I would suggest you go before the Lord to get your answer on how he wants you to proceed and do not let people coerce you to do something you're not comfortable with. Mm. Uh, do it if you feel comfortable with it. But in my case, um, she said it was going to be 50-50. And I says, well, you know, hey, in my case, I chose to let my body rest and uh, heal from the chemo. Mm. And to take my body through a healing process with eating differently and exercising and doing all the things that the Lord put on my heart to do. Mm -hmm. Now, in the process of getting reconstruction for my breast and decided to get implants, I ran across a snag. The person Mm -hmm. that was supposed to do the reconstruction I was supposed to see her for the last visit and giving me information. I was told it was an outpatient procedure and that I would be out the same day and mm-hmm. that would be it. Well, in the process, uh, she was one of, she was a party of my breast cancer surgeon to do some of the work that needed to be done when I went through the uh, surgery. Now, another thing I want to suggest before you go under the knife, you you tell your surgeon, we're going to pray. We're going to pray before you touch me. <laughs> hey, prayer changes things. Because I don't changes. know where your spirit is, but I'm going to have you to pray with me. And they, they agree. And so, So, um, okay, so what happened was I went for my last visit with this other doctor and uh, I had a question about a bill and uh, it was because I called my insurance company and they said, you don't have to pay a dime, Ms. Brown. Mm. You were free and clear. And I was wondering why was this particular doctor that was going to do the implants was charging me. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, I go into her office for her last consultation before she was going to schedule me for the implants. And what happened was uh, I was in there for over, 
an hour waiting on her. And this guy comes in and says something about she's busy and she's delayed. I said, okay, well, regardless. And I says, well, when she comes in here, I'm going to get on the phone and call the building department because they had a phone in the room I was in and asked them, why was I charged? Well, no one could give me an answer. So I said, do you want me to come down there to your office to find out why is this? Because my insurance company said I don't owe anything. So finally, the guy says, no, you don't need to come down. She's not a part of your network. Oh, now I'm ready to get upset, really upset now. So that means she's getting ready to overcharge me for something that I should not be charged for. Mm. So they said, well, you don't owe anything, Miss Brown. They did tell me that. So it was a misunderstanding. And you need to clear up any misunderstandings. Don't take anything for granted when they send yeah. you those bills. But, you because, know, that's just another trick of the enemy, like you said yeah. earlier, to get you, you know, to get you off track, to, yeah. to get you out of alignment, to make you start to worry. You know, that's just a trick of well, the enemy. The good part was, I, because I was in this connect group at church, one particular lady that had to have the same implants and reconstruction that I had, she was at the meeting at church and she explained how her doctor did the procedure as an outpatient. And the next day, she was at the luncheon with the rest of us with the breast cancer survivors. I'm like, whoa. I, <laughs> she said, he's wonderful. And I said, well, I want your doctor. See? So that's another reason why you need to get in connect groups because you'll learn who got good doctors, who got connections that you need because this particular doctor that was thought she was going to do it to show you how God confirmed that she was not supposed to do it. When I confronted her about the bill and I told her to her face, I said, honey, you will not do this surgery. She, little, little did she know I already had another doctor mm. <laughs> lined up. Won't he do and, it? And yes, he would do it. And when I walked out of her office, she had hors d'oeuvres spread out to promote her business. Mm. and forgot about me in the room for an hour because she's busy oh, wow. trying to look good for bringing in money for her business. Yeah. And I but that, well, that was I, just God's way of confirming that you weren't supposed to have her do it anyway. He had to put yes. that in place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, mm. I, you know, Everything went smooth with this other doctor. I was able to get in and he did it. And I got out the same day. I was able to do whatever I need to do uh, the next day with no pain, no nothing. And matter of fact, the whole time I went through chemo and all of that, I had no pain. Well, I confess I was going to have no pain. Amen. So it's all into your confession. Because if you have kids, you have other responsibilities. You have to be very intimate with your Lord and Savior to talk to him about what you're going through because mm -hmm. the pastor can't be there 24-7 for you. Mm -hmm. When you claim that you are saved and sanctified and full with the Holy Spirit, he will tell you exactly what you need to do. And the uh, faith walk. And right. I like how you started it at the beginning when she wanted to call whatever you that that chemo you were going to receive. She wanted to use, you know, uh, a term for it. And you stopped it in the beginning and said, no, 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 this I'm covered by the blood. This is what we're yes. going to call this. Not, yes. not that other character. And then also I was taking communion too a lot. Mm. during that time and uh okay. praising god and and uh it was my journey i have to say my journey was so easy 
Mm. It was kind of scary at times because people was like, what are you doing out in public? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know the God I serve. Right, right. Mm. And uh, I did go to a dance that my brother gave. And, uh, and, and people were really shocked that I went to the dance. I said, girl, I love dancing. And I said, but I'm going to start dancing before the Lord from here on out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Man, you have uh, shared so many great nuggets. I, I, I pray that people are listening. I, I want to yeah. take you back though, because um, a misconception is that we don't have to have our mammograms every year and I love what you said that you were preoccupied with taking care of your other family members that yes. you neglected to take care of yourself and yes. just in that short amount of time because you have been having it every year yes so ladies it's important that we don't Very skip important. a year it's important that we don't do that that we get the mammograms every year. And, and we are hoping that you all will get the mammograms with us. I know you've seen our post. I started off the beginning of this, giving you the phone numbers that you can call and pre-register to have your mammograms with, with us. Um, I love Miss Sylvia's heart and her faith journey, because this was a faith journey. Everything that you guys heard her say was based on what God says and the word and taking authority over those situations that didn't line up with his word. It's um, another thing was while I was going through the journey, I thought about the woman at the well and where the Lord told her all about herself. You don't realize that uh, when there is a disruption in your life, and there's a crisis that affects you, God is trying to get your attention that he wants you to spend more time with him. Mm. And during that time, I spent so much time with God. He revealed everything from childhood to the present, mm. how he was there for me because I was still and quiet and willing to spend time with him and commune with him. And um, we all have some type of challenge of persecution as we walk this walk or uh, any type of rejection or whatever that came along with our journey, whether it was on the job, whether it was in a marriage, whether it was dealing with your children, no mm. matter what. God is so faithful to show you if you quiet. I mean, I shut down everything. I mean, shut down everything. Because mm -hmm. I said, hey, this is bigger than me. Yeah. I need to hear from you. No distractions. Anybody that was negative or wanted to have a pity party around me, they couldn't be around me. Because I had to focus on what he was telling me day by day. Yes. So. You have to protect that's your spirit. Testimony. Yeah. That's good. I'm so glad that you came. I'm so very just grateful that you came on today. And as you were talking, I was looking up a couple of scriptures that I want to share really quick before we close out. Um, Matthew 9 and 35 says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching yes. in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and yes. healing every disease and sickness. And that yes. to me says, God doesn't want us sick. And it's clear from this verse that he wants to, and he will heal everyone that will come to him for healing. And Miss Sylvia just mentioned that about protecting your eye gates, protecting your ear gates, protecting your spiritual health. And for those of you who may be struggling with an illness, um, I want to challenge you to start looking at that sickness as something that 
was sent um, that you're going to return to sender. Um, like we get unwanted mail that doesn't belong at our address. We, we mark yeah. that thing, return to sender. So return it to sender and then go to the one who can give you your healing. And then yeah. the other scripture was John 1 and 2. It says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. And how you're going to know how faithful God is unless you go through a test. Amen. And my journey has always been life is a test. Mm -hmm. And um, my testimony is that he's been so faithful in my life. I never missed anything money wise. Mm. He says, you claim the poor claim I'm rich. That's right. And every bill is paid and every That's need right. is met. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's the provider. Yes. He, he is. is your provider. Amen. And if you need to read Psalms 23 every day, and you know, the reason why I joined Faith Church is because on that uh, New Year's, I mean, the new year, uh, David Crank talked about Psalms 23. And I said, I confirmed that. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that, that you you have to apply this word. Yeah. And that's when you receive the results. Amen. You and don't not... allow the devil or anyone else to deceive you. Yes. D don't yes. do it. He, God wants you blessed. God wants you healed. God wants you whole. And you need to start walking in it. And 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 once he proves faithful to you he wants to know are you going to trust him mm -hmm. are you going to trust yeah. people or are you going to trust him amen that he's going to uh you're gonna you're gonna make it through the other side in other words um the fiery challenges that you go through the fire on the other side um when the um even through even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. No evil. You are with me, That's your right. rod and your staff, they comfort me. Mm. We talking so, now. <laughs> and, and his peace, yes. his peace is going to be with you if you want it. Amen. Now, uh, if you don't want it, you mm. allow people to come in your life to disturb your peace. You take authority over that. Amen. And say, no one will come in my life that's going to destroy my peace and my joy. Mm, 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 I mean, mm. he, wants, he wants you free of all bondage. Yes. yes. He wants to deliver you. Amen. That's where Cindy Trim comes in again. Ooh. She is amazing. She's amazing. Yes. And you know, as you were talking, I was thinking about Matthew uh, 9, I think it's verses 20 through 22, where it talks mm -hmm. about the woman with the issue of blood. And, yes. and that's, that scripture says that she had a flow of blood for 12 years. Yes. But she knew if she could get to the place where she could touch the hem of his garment. And Felicia, I quoted that scripture while I was going through. I said, Lord, I need to touch the hem of your mm -hmm. garment. Now, mm -hmm. spiritually, we cannot see him. Right. But that's where faith comes in. That's right. You have to know that if you call out and say, I want to touch the hem of his garment. Mm -hmm. And you call out. Yeah. He will answer. Yeah. But and what did he to say to her, though? And what did he say to her? He said, your faith has, has made, made you whole. Mm. Your yes. faith. Yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. And then the last scripture I'm going to share before we, we wrap this up, you guys, is First Peter 2 and verse 24. It says, he himself bore our sins in his body, on the cross so yes. that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed it didn't say you might be it didn't say you could be 
it, it said, you have been healed. Felicia, what more can be added to what God has already said? Let me say this, one more thing. What you just said confirmed that I asked the Lord um, after what you just said, he said, are you willing to have battle scars like me and mm. be here. Mm. I said, Lord, this is a light affliction. Mm. I will receive my battle scars and know that you get the final say so. And that was my say, of my last comment. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we know, we know <laughs> it is not God's will for us to be sick. No. And, you know, sometimes yeah. you hear people say, uh, God brought this sickness on me, but I, I don't believe that. I believe that God mm -hmm. is good. He's not evil. And every good and perfect gift comes from him. And like you said, Miss Sylvia, if you're going through, sometimes you have to go through these tests and these yeah. trials to, to bring you closer to him, to increase that faith and to yeah. operate in the power and the authority that he had already given you. Yes, and, that, and and like I said, it's not just for you. Yeah. Because other people are watching your walk, family members are watching you, and you may convince them that, hey, it's more to it than this because your light is shining in dark mm -hmm. places. Mm, 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 mm. That's another word. We keep saying we're wrapping up. This is the last thing. I promise this is the last thing <laughs> I am going to say. Um, <laughs> healing. Is your God given right? Yes. But but it doesn't mean, you know, that you just, you know, you're entitled, you know, right means that you are entitled to it. But it also means that faith is the key. He yeah. has it available to you, but where's your faith? Where's your uh -huh. faith? He said, Woman, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole. Yes. Just like the 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 guy at the well, and he he you know he wanted his healing, but he says, "Well, all these people are before me," and he says, "If you really want to be whole, get up and That's walk." Right. Mm, that means do you got to do something. something. I always say faith is an action word. Yes, faith is it an is. action word. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you guys, yes. we could do this all night, but I just want to say one thing, and then Miss Sylvia, I'm gonna have you close us out in prayer. So. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Um, but I just want to say this. If there is someone who is struggling, um, if you're struggling with any type of infirmity, um, I would encourage you to read, to meditate, confess God's word, read scriptures to build and encourage your faith until you see God's healing manifest. He already said he, he's done it. But until you see it, in the natural, stand on your faith. And you guys come out and have your mammogram with us on October the 7th at the Rock Road County um, Branch Library. Women of Grace is gonna be there. Um, Missouri Baptist Mammography Van is gonna be there. Get that mammogram with us that morning from nine until 12. You can pre-register. I gave you those phone numbers, but I'm going to give them to you again before we close out because it's just that important and you're just that important. You can pre-register by calling 314-996-5170. And if you don't have insurance, that's not a problem. Dial this number and see if you qualify for a free mammogram. That's 314-956-5170. 9829. And again, that deadline to pre register is September the 25th. Our event is October the 7th. Come out from 9 to 12, have your mammogram with us. Stick around from 12 to 2, eat lunch with your Women of Grace sisters, hear um, some encouraging testimonies, get some breast cancer awareness information, and then um, we're going to raffle off some things. You guys know how we do it. We are a giving ministry. So uh, this event will be no different from the others that we've had in the past. Miss Sylvia, thank you so much for being here this evening. You know, you already know, I love, adore, um, 
and just <laughs> am so grateful that we get to do life and ministry together. So yes, if you. you would do me the honor and close us out in prayer, I would greatly appreciate it. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus and I bind up every demonic force of still and killing destruction and sickness and disease, Lord God. I thank you that the women of grace are hearers and doers of the word. And Father God, I thank you right now that they will act on their faith, Lord God, to trust you in dealing with everything that they're dealing with in their lives. Lord God, give them godly wisdom. Yes. Give them direction. Let the Holy Spirit lead them and not worldly people, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are also giving them the strength to be operate in the fruits of the spirit of peace, love, joy, long suffering, and patience. And Father God, I just thank you right now that this ministry would reach millions of people all over the world, Lord God, that are going through some type of challenge. It may not be just breast cancer, Lord, because there's all types of cancers out there, Lord God, that they seek knowledge that will help them to go through their journey, Lord God, and help others, Lord God. Don't look at this as something that is a death sentence. It is something that he, they can overcome. Like the Hebrew boys that went into the fire, Lord God, they could come out on the other side in the name of Jesus. Okay. And I thank you, Lord, for all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you guys, thank you so much for being here with us this Thursday. Thank you for your support of Women of Grace Outreach Ministry. And we're going to say good night. We love you guys. And we look forward to seeing you next week, 6.30 p.m. for Weekly Word with Women of Grace. Thank you, Miss Sylvia. I absolutely Thank love you. you. Have a great evening. Thanks again for being here Thank with you. us and for, for all that you shared. Thank you, Felicia. And you You're have welcome. a blessed evening. You too. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.